Hello Facebook, hello YouTube, what is up everybody? This is Ruben and I'm back with another Ruben Report. Today is pretty much the big maintenance day. Uh, it's the end of the week. We finally reached over 5,000 miles and just as promised, I'm going to be doing the 5,000 mile maintenance video today or as much as I can <laughs> get through today. Uh, 5,000 mile maintenance um, sheet that is on in the back of the RX3 service manual. There's quite a few line uh, service line items that are in there. I'll just finish up what I can today and potentially do the rest tomorrow or even next week. I don't know, but it, it shouldn't take too much. But before we get into all that, I'm gonna do just like I do in every video, show you guys the mileage, so that way we know where we are at. Oh, there's a trip I'm on her. Okay, so we are at 5,039 miles. So just a little bit over. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with, well, the easiest stuff first um, pretty much every two weeks I clean the chain and give the bike a wash down so that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do first and then we'll start tackling some of the line items that are on the 5,000 mile uh, maintenance uh, checklist okay all right so the chain has been wiped down and waxed up as always I let it sit uh, for the wax to soak in while I do other stuff um, The bike has been washed down so all the bug splatters are off headlights clean All that nature Okay, so now we're going to get into uh, The meat and potatoes of this whole video so 5,000 mile maintenance um for starters, just a couple metrics. The bike has about, I think it's 2,766 miles is what's on the new motor, the new engine. So in total, the bike in total has 5,039, but the new motor has 2,766 miles on it. And the current valve adjustment that I have on the bike has 619 miles on it yeah the from the other video that I did I had to adjust the valves uh, like two weeks ago because <clears throat> it was starting to run a bit poorly so uh, I, I say all that um, just because when we're when we're talking about doing a 5,000 mile maintenance just want to get those things out of there uh, and there are certain line items that are listed within the spec sheet um, that we're going to go over. Uh, some of those items, um, well really not very much, there's just a couple items that I'm going to ignore which would be to check the valves and I think there was one other. Uh, the one other item was adjust front and rear wheel true. Uh, that's mainly because I don't have a truing stand. However, um, I'm still going to kind of be doing that when we do the checking the spokes. I do tune the spokes. So I don't have a, I don't put it on a truing wheel, like take the wheel off and put it on a truing wheel, but I do adjust the spokes and that partially is um, truing the wheel. And then the last item that I'm going to ignore will be replace the spark plug. Uh, I have a, an iridium plug in there. Um, I don't plan to replace it. I'll, I'll check it. We'll, we'll look at it, but I, I don't, I'm not going to replace it. It, should, it shouldn't be um, out of service life yet. It's, it's an iridium plug. It should last um, well over 10,000 miles, hopefully. So, yeah, um, to get started, uh, well, first, I'm going to let you guys see the checklist itself, and then we're going to go ahead and get started with the first line item, which is to 
uh, change the oil. All right, you guys, here we are looking at the actual page within the service manual. This is going to be on page 102 or 101 tonight, I believe. And excuse the quality, I, I took a screenshot off of the application that I use to actually um, modify this on my tablet. So pretty much we have quite a few line items here that we're going to be checking and everything that's green is what we're actually going to be doing or uh, you know look glancing over everything that is red is what we're not going to be doing and the one that is blue we're still going to do it but we're not going to do it completely and we'll go into that in, in a bit so the first two uh, change the engine oil and check the engine mounts we got air filter throttle operation clutch clutch free prey um, now this one here that's orange lubricate the clutch pivot point um, that is something that I was curious about that's why I put a little orange question mark I called CSC wanting to ask a question about it um, they unfortunately didn't get back to me and now it's gonna be the weekend so um, I might have to uh, get back to this one at some other time um, yeah I, I, I think the clutch pivot points uh, give me one moment here okay so I have the actual manual open here now and I pretty much search for the word clutch pivot and this is the only place that it shows up in the maintenance which is on the actual maintenance page but when I search clutch in general there's a hundred and nineteen terms and let's see we're gonna go to page 20 because that's where basically all the clutch stuff is at okay I think yeah, don't don't quote me on this, but I think the clutch pivot point may be this thing here. I mean, that's the to me that's the only thing that pivots on the actual uh, engine case. But I'm I'm not completely sure well, what they what they're talking about when it comes to clutch pivot point. So that's. That's the question that I had. Um, I was looking, I did the search obviously in the actual manual and I couldn't find clutch pivot uh, specifically. But I'm assuming this might be it, but don't quote me on it. All right. All right, so now uh, it's a bunch of other just general checks and stuff. We got seat cables, your lights, your brakes, fluids, calipers, tire pressure, hoses, the battery connections, um, the chain, sprockets, chassis hardware. Um, also installing the fuel, Lucas fuel injection. So it's a lot of stuff that it's really just inspections, just just checking things. Not not much uh, of adjustment mostly just looking at it uh, adjusting if needed uh, and again because this is so long I'm <laughs> I'm not gonna do everything uh, today I'm gonna get to as much as I can and then the next day or next week whenever it may be we'll release part two and we'll get to the other stuff okay all right so now that you guys have seen that sheet um, we're not going to go through everything in order. I'm just going to try to tackle all the big things first and then I'll, we'll get to all the other little miscellaneous stuff. Um, it's A lot of it's pretty easy stuff to do. It's just checking stuff. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and, and do all the heavy lifting first. <laughs> all right. Uh, before we get the oil change though, um, just to note, we have 1,700 and I believe 33, yeah, 1,733 miles on the current oil. So it's not 
a whole lot, but I'm gonna go ahead and still change it. I know that I've been riding this bike very consistently, so I don't think it's gonna hurt too much to change it prematurely. It's probably a lot better to do it that way. All right, so let me get all my oil changing stuff ready, and we'll go ahead and get that oil changed. All right, so before we get down in there, I'm just gonna look at the oil sight window. I know it's pretty hard to see in there, but it looks pretty dark. And fun fact, uh, this 1,766 mile uh, oil interval is actually the longest I've ever had oil in this uh, bike. So it'll be pretty interesting to see uh, what it all looks like after all this. All right guys, the oil is starting to drain slowly and it looks pretty dark. Again, this is the highest mileage that I've ever ridden with, uh, with oil thus far, 1,733 miles. So, <sighs> coloration is to be expected, it's quite dark. So I'm gonna screw it in a little bit more. really starting to flow now. Right. And let me get a paper towel. Get a little dab here. Doesn't really look too bad after all. <laughs> it's just on uh, first glance, I guess. Hmm. Overall, it looks pretty good. I don't see any like large specks in there or anything, but well, we'll get to see things a lot more. Uh, clearly and in depth once we start opening up the screens and the and the filter and do the whole wipe down all right so we got everything out all the filters and screens the filter itself looks great I don't see any like metallic flakes on it of any kind you guys really get in there I get it's shiny but that's just because the oil is on there I don't see actual metal itself uh, stay in focus yeah there's no metal flakes on there yeah it is the right side screen see any debris on there either. Walk this over. Hmm. It's a tiny little bit in that little corner there. But I don't I don't really think that that's uh, I don't really think that's metal. It looks like something else. Focus. All right, we're moving to the other side so you guys can see the other screen. And again, clean. And again, with those little bitty stuff in the corners, I don't necessarily know what that is. It doesn't look like metal though. Random gunk. 
Okay, so I'll clean these up, put these all back together, and then fill it up with oil again. All right, left side cover is done, nice and clean. All right, you can focus. Okay. This, uh, these covers, these screens, this is still the original screen. Uh, I bought spares, but I just haven't had to replace them yet. They still look great. So I'm gonna put this one back in and we'll get to the other side. Okay, I got the left side of, or no, the, the right side screen. The other one was the left side, excuse me. This one's all cleaned up now. Hopefully you guys can see that. Right. So I'm gonna get this one put in there as well. And um, side note, um, if you guys ever get confused about how to put this thing back in, it only goes in one way. So one side has a, like the diameter or the little edge here is a lot thicker than the other side. See how that's a lot thinner? The thin side is supposed to go outward because you have this, uh, the bolt that goes over it. Makes sense? So the thinner side goes outward so that way the little cap, it'll fit. All right. So put the thick side in the thin side out. Okay. And that one trick I was teaching you guys in one of my older videos to place a bolt kind of on this little button here. And I'm finding this particular filter doesn't want to actuate. So, and that's kind of concerning. So let me try to well, hold the phone in my other hand. <laughs> ah, this is hard to do. One-handed. It really doesn't want to go, huh? Okay, let me try a screwdriver instead. All right, I got it with the screwdriver. It took a, quite a bit of force. It's, it was just stuck for some reason. So I'll show you guys now. It goes in and out. Oops. Pretty freely now. Okay, and the reason why that's important is uh, if your oil filter was to get clogged, or at least that's what Sifu told me, if this gets clogged, um, that little pressure release thing, it's supposed to allow um, oil through regardless of the um, filter being clogged or not. So that's really important in the, you know, in the rare case that uh, <laughs> this thing gets absolutely filled up with debris and stuff, which I don't really think is very likely to happen unless you like skip your oil changes or have really, really long oil change intervals for whatever reason. All right, and lastly here, I took out the drain bolt itself to see if there's any type of debris on it, and there isn't any at all. So that looks good. I'll go ahead and button everything back up and we'll start to fill it up with some oil now, okay? Are with some of the finest cheap synthetic oil. Uh, I've been putting this stuff in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up now. Oh. So generally when you fill it up, Go ahead and put the first one in there. And then with the second one, maybe put about mm, a little over half, run the engine, and then check the level. Yeah, you run the engine for a couple, for a minute or two, and then you're gonna check the level to make sure that it's uh, where you want it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my second bottle here. All right, the engine has been running for a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and shut her off. Okay, I'm gonna let it settle down. I'm gonna check the level 
and top off if needed. Okay, so we got our oil level just about there. We're going to top it off. Alright, and uh, we'll check it again. Alright, we got it right where we want it now. Okay, and button her up and then we'll move on hopefully to some quick and easy things that we can get to. Uh, I don't want to use too much time. Okay, so I went ahead and cleaned up the excess wax off the chain. Uh, everything's all buttoned up and ready to go now. Uh, we're going to go over some of the easier <laughs> line items now. Um, you know, changing the oil and uh, cleaning the chain, all that stuff, took a little bit longer than I expected. Obviously, you know, doing the job and filming it at the same time things just take a lot longer <laughs> than if it was that I, if I wasn't doing it or wasn't you know filming it so we're just gonna go ahead and try to knock out as many of these like easy easier items um, as quickly as possible and then we'll try to tackle the rest of the stuff tomorrow so Starting with throttle operation. Okay. Uh, well, let me uh, put the key in. I guess one of the main things you want to check for is to make sure that you can turn your bars all the way without it, um, you know, without it revving. Because if it's if it's not adjusted correctly, like I'm going to do it on purpose right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, just turning your bar is what's going to make it. Um, rev and you don't want to do that so you want it to be loose enough to where you have that one to one to three degrees of, of turn and you can move your bars all the way in each direction without uh, causing it uh, Rev. Okay. All right, so that's done. Okay, so check high beam and low beam. There is my low, and there's my high. Low, high, low, high. They work great. I just recently did a nighttime riding video. And yeah, they work the way that they're supposed to. Um, it's been, I think that's been in the bike since, well, I think that was one of the first upgrades I did. So it's been in the bike for a very long time now. Um, turn signals and brake lights. Oh, as you guys can see, my uh, uh, funny story, my turn signal um, button here one time when I was getting on the bike my jacket uh, snagged on the little turn signal uh, thing and it was like a, one night when I was going to the grocery store it popped off and I don't know where it went <laughs> couldn't find it so I just got one of these little buttons here a little plastic rubber filled it with um, silicone and it works just fine works just as good okay so that's good there that's good there and we'll switch that's good there that's 
get there. Or we can do the hazards. So that's good there. Okay. And then brake lights. Oh, hold on. Works. That was the front brake, and then here goes the rear. All right. The next, uh, whoops, the next line item. Let's see here. Use my tablet. Next um, line item will be check and adjust clutch operation. So the clutch, I mean, you guys already know, the clutch has always been kind of janky <laughs> with, with uh, this bike and really any of these bikes. Um, this was really a line item that I was gonna skip because this is like something that I'm constantly checking and where it's at right now, um, I'm, I'm happy where it's at right now. I've gotten used to it, so I really don't want to change it. It works. It works just fine. Uh, next is going to be clutch free play. Uh, same thing. Or, oh well, the free play. In all honesty, when it comes to the clutch free play with most CSC bikes, you know, you can let the clutch out all the way up to like here before the clutch engages. So all this is free play, which again, for most of the CSC bikes, I don't know if you guys have adjusted yours or have, have done, uh, you know, whatever kind of adjustments with your bike to make it different but it just seems like whatever it is that I do on this bike to try to change it the engage point is always like way out here and again I've gotten used to it so that's something that I'm <laughs> um, uh, I don't really want to change okay the next but to adjust it there's two points you can adjust it here and you can adjust it at the little same thing with the throttle. Uh, there's a little um, it pulled this boot back and it's hard to see. Hold on, let me get a better angle. Yeah, there you go. So you pull this boot back, okay, and you can adjust it there. It's similar to um, the throttle one, okay. And then next will be the auxiliary lights. Uh, once again, just did a nighttime riding video not too long ago. And the auxiliary lights are excellent. All right. And what's next here? We have Brake pads, front and rear. Let's start with the rear, since we're back here. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. Maybe it's better if I, okay. But uh, got quite a bit of material. I don't, in in all honesty, I don't really use the rear brake as much as I do the front brake. Because the rear brake, especially with someone of my size, it just doesn't do very much. So I'm usually on the front brake because that's where all the braking power is. And um, the braking power on this bike is not really the best to begin with. 
front breaker. Da, da, da. It's really hard to tell. Hmm. really hard to tell how the front brake is doing. Alright, the brake pads, they look like they're getting pretty low. It's definitely something I should address here soon. It's not making any noise or anything when I'm actually writing but it's not definitely something I'm gonna have to tackle here soon so we will address that uh, shortly <laughs> next item I'm put that in the notes here so next item will be um, the caliper bolts and pins I'm just kind of lightly glancing over certain things because I don't I don't really expect there to be especially on the back brake for there to be that much wear uh, because again I don't use my back brake as much as I should or I, I use both my brakes when I stop for sure but I'm much more heavier on the front brake because you know being a heavier guy riding the spike that's where all the braking power is. Okay, um, looks good so far. Uh, the front and rear tire wear. So, rear tire. Um, it's definitely from the last time that we did a, a maintenance video. It's definitely gotten lower these tires are original these are the original tires so they have five over five a little over five thousand miles on them now and the tread is starting to get um, low like right here it's almost the same and it's it's mainly in the middle because I ride this bike to commute so on the on the edges here it's quite deep but in the middle it's Getting, it's, it's getting pretty shallow so all right tires and front brakes are going on the list of items that should be addressed soon okay uh, next is going to be oh well the front tire of course which looks like it's brand new almost um, yeah front tires they always last a lot longer than the rear tires do but I don't so I don't really anticipate for there to be anywhere or it's, it's hardly anywhere all right this is typical this is probably gonna last basically twice the amount of mileage as the rear tire is. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and move on. 
the next mine item is tire pressure okay so I'm gonna got, show you guys a screenshot of my Bluetooth tire pressure sensors in just a moment All right, since the rear tire seems to be fine, I'm gonna pump up the front tire just a tiny bit, and then I'll show you guys a screenshot of where I get this tire pressure to. All right, I went ahead and filled it up with some more air. I'm gonna give you guys a screenshot of the new tire pressure now. All right, so we got almost 35 PSI. I like to ride my tires a, a little bit higher because again I am a bigger guy and so a little extra firmness is is nice for me and that's just gonna hopefully allow the air to last a little bit longer okay so we're gonna move on to the next line item after I put this away all right we're just gonna do two more uh, on the list for today we'll do the rest either tomorrow or next week um, check the coolant level Probably better if I take this cap off. I actually might need to add some. So I will do that. And the next one will be uh, before I go grab my uh, before I go grab my coolant. Uh, the next one will be to adjust the chain and and I guess it is time to finally adjust this chain it's been mm, let me see all right I went ahead and checked one of my videos on my channel uh, the chain upgrade video and I saw that when I replaced this chain, I was at 1,845 miles. So that means this chain has 3,192 miles on it. About that. So time to adjust it a little bit. Um, it's very convenient that I have, not only for everyone else's benefit who may have this type of bike, um, to know how to do maintenance and things of that nature. But just in general, it's really nice that I have everything documented so I can always go back to be like, okay, when did I do this? When did I do that? And um, I've been making it, I've been really making it a habit to include the mileage in every single one of my videos because you never know when you want to go back and be like, okay, when did I do this? When did I, <laughs> when did I put this in? Uh, how long has it been? since uh, this component's been on there and, and such and such. But um, I'm going to uh, start, well, I'm gonna actually go through all the videos that I've made and uh, reports that I've done and things of that nature and I'm gonna like make an, I'm gonna make an official log of all the maintenance that I've done thus far. So that way, well, if I ever do um, sell this bike or, you know, it's just not, or just in general, it's just nice to have everything documented, everything in, in, in a log about everything that's been done to the bike. Because there's also a couple things that I've done that wasn't filmed that I still have in the back of my head <laughs> when I did them. Um, so I'm going to get to that. Okay, so let's go get that coolant. All right, I used this uh, same funnel for uh, the oil and I went ahead and ran some brake cleaner through it to get all the oil residue out. And then we're gonna go ahead and pour uh, the coolant in there through this little funnel. This is the skinniest funnel I have, so it's, I have to use it for multiple things. Uh, one moment. All right, and as you guys can see, it fits in there like a glove. Uh, I'll try to hold the camera <laughs> steady while I pour this in there. It's not going to take very much. Just cut just a little tiny bit. At least it should. Okay. I think that's enough. 
because it started to run over on the bottom a little bit and uh, I might have a little bit of coolant coming out the overflow hose beneath but we'll see either way it's topped off and uh, that concludes well actually you know what no there's, there's uh, one other thing I want to do um, it's not mentioned on um, it's not mentioned on the on the maintenance uh, checklist but uh, regardless what I wanted to do is I wanted to ensure that my brake rotors and brake calipers are clean so that's why I got this so I'm gonna go ahead and spray this front rotor and caliper get in there Side as well. Alright, and you guys can see down there, there's quite a bit of gunkin debris coming off of it. And the same thing I'm gonna do with the back rotor. Again, I don't use it very much, but I'm still gonna go ahead and do it. here. It's hard to get the angles. I saw that. Oh. Okay. Uh. All right. So that is going to be it for today's uh, section. I guess that you can call this part one of the 5,000 mile uh, maintenance. Um, we will continue this again either tomorrow or next week. We'll just see. Yeah, all right. So until next time, guys, stay safe out there. Peace. All right. One other thing I'm going to go ahead and do. Sorry. <laughs> it's going to be adding this thing in. Actually, uh, I got quite a bit left. I mean, I really I do use this quite regularly and frequently. Um, maybe every week, every two weeks. It doesn't take much. I mean, it just depends on... I try to do it when I have a absolute full tank, but we're going to go ahead and put some in there. Okay. <laughs> now we're done. See y'all next time. Alright, I just put the bike back and I almost forgot to adjust the chain, so I just did it. And there we are. Alright, change adjusted now. Okay, I'm really tired. I'll see y'all later.